Hi, welcome back to Hibernate tutorial. So in this lesson, we will learn the basic concepts of Hibernate and architecture of Hibernate and we will see the benefits of Hibernate and also we will have a look into uh, you know benefits of Hibernate or JDBC. Alright, so this lesson uh, uh, you know contains a theoretical, theoretical concepts. So just stick with me. In further lessons, we are going to learn a lot about Hibernate coding examples all right so in this lesson we will have a look into uh, the hibernate basic concepts core components architecture benefits benefits for jdbc a lot of things all right let's get started hibernate is one of the most widely used java orm tool most of the applications uses relational database to store application information and at the low level, we use JDBC API for connecting to the database and for form code operations. All right. So if you look at the JDBC code, uh, we need to write a lot of boilerplate code over there. For example, we need to establish a connection with a relational database. Then we write. We need to write SQL statements. We need to execute the SQL statements using JDBC API, and we need to iterate over a result set and we need to you know close the resources so there are a lot of binder plate code we need to write all right for each operation and there may be chances of resource leakage or a data inconsistency because all the work needs to be done by the developer all right so this is where a ORM tool comes handy now let's have a look into what is a ORM so ORM stands for object relational mapping all right, and it's a programming technique to map application domain model objects to the relational database tables and vice versa. So we can use ORM to directly map our application domain model objects to the relational database tables. So I will explain you what is a ORM and how it works with an example in further lessons. All right, and let's have a look into what is a JPA. So JPA stands for Java Persistent API. Uh, it is a java standard for mapping java objects to the relational database all right so jp is a just a specification and it has several implementations uh, like uh, for example hibernate eclipse link and apache open jpa so remember jpa is just a specification it exposes the apis and there are several implementations are available for popular implementations are hibernate eclipse link apache open jpa and Alright, so JP specifications are defined with annotations in JavaX.persistent package. Alright, and using JP annotation helps us in writing implementation independent code. For example, if you are using uh, Hibernate in your application, then you can replace Hibernate, to Hibernate with Eclipse link because JP you know, it is a specification. So it helps us in writing implementation independent code. Alright. Now let's have a look into what is a Hibernate. So Hibernate is a Java based ORM tool that provides a framework for mapping application domain objects to the relational database tables and vice versa. All right. And Hibernate provides a reference implementation of the JPA that makes it a great choice as a ORM tool with the benefits of loose coupling. All right. So here you can see this is a diagram. It has uh, here it has a you know student Java class and uh, here it has a, you know student uh, database table and Hibernate is a ORM mapping that maps a domain objects to the relational table. All right, so it will directly map student domain object to the student database table. Let's have a look into the Hibernate architecture. So look at the diagram here. So Hibernate sits between Java application and database. So Java application uses Hibernate APIs in order to perform a database operations uh, with the database. All right. So notice here these are the core components of Hibernate, and uh, we'll be having a look into all these core components. All right. So the first is a configuration. So we generally write a configuration in hibernate.properties or hibernate.x you know, uh, configuration.xml file. For Java based configurations, so you may find a class annotated with add configuration class. Alright. 
and configuration is used by session factory to work with the java application and the database all right so second is the session factory so session factory uh, you know uh, is a uh, you know thread safe and it represents a mapping of domain model objects to the database and it, it acts as a factory for session objects all right and, and session factory is very expensive to create so for any given database the application should have only one associated session factory so make sure that you should maintain a single session factory object for a single database and the session factory you know uh, it's a thread shape and immutable so you should uh, make it as a singleton whenever you use the you know session factory in your application and uh, i will see how to use a session factory and how to create a session object by using session factory with an example in further lessons just remember session factory is a thread safe and it provides a factory of session objects and uh, session factory provides a second level cache all right so now the session so session is a single threaded uh, short lived object so which we use session to communicate with the database and behind the scenes uh, hibernate session wraps a jdbc connection object and it acts as a factory for connection uh, transaction object so we'll see how to use a session and uh, you know how to use session methods to communicate to the database so just remember session is a you know short lived short lived and single threaded object and behind the scenes the session, hibernate session wraps a jdbc connection object and session object provides a factory of transaction objects all right now transaction so transaction is also a single threaded short lived object and we can use uh, to perform a transaction within that particular database operation and now the query so hibernate allows applications to query the database for one or more stored objects so hibernate provides different techniques to query database including named query and criteria api all right and the first level cache so it represents the default cache used by the hibernate session object while interacting interacting with the database and it is also called a session cache all right so one thing you need, you need to remember first level cache is available with the session object until the session object is live all right and once the session object is destroyed then post level cache is also destroyed right and uh, persistent objects so persistent objects are pojos which get persisted as one of the rows in a relational table in a database by the hibernate all right and they are compiled in a configuration files and are annotated with add entity annotation I'll show you how to create a persistent class or a GP entity in a Hibernate application. We'll see in a further sections with an example. All right. So second level cache. So second level cache is used to store objects across sessions, and session level cache is associated with the session factory. All right. And uh, you know, by default, session factory is disabled. Uh, second level cache is disabled, so you need to enable session, second level cache. And one of the most common sessions second level cache provider is eh cache all right so we need to explicitly enable the second level cache and we need to provide a cache provider for second level cache all right so these are the core core components of hibernate all right so so far we had a look into what is a hibernate and hibernate architecture now let's have a look into what are the important benefits of Hibernate framework. All right. So Hibernate eliminates all the boilerplate code that comes with the JDBC and take care of managing resources. So we can just focus on writing the business logic. All right. And the Hibernate framework provides a support for XML as well as JP uh, annotations that makes our code implementation independent. All right. And Hibernate provides a powerful uh, HQ sql query that is a hibernate query language that is similar to sql however uh, hibernate query language is fully object oriented and understands the concepts like inheritance polymorphism and association so yeah so hibernate query language is you know one of the you know best benefit or feature provided by hibernate uh, to write a database independent you know queries all right 
So Hibernate is easy to integrate with other, uh, you know, Java, Java, Java W frameworks. So it is so popular that Spring framework provides a built-in support for integrating Hibernate with the Spring applications. All right. And Hibernate supports, uh, you know, lazy initialization using FrogJ objects. And for forms, actual database queries only when it's required. All right. So again, I know Hibernate Cache helps us in getting a better performance. So if you can remember, Hibernate provides a post level cache and second level cache. So we can use these caches to boost the application performance. All right. And uh, Hibernate provides, uh, you know, database vendor specific features. And, you know, Hibernate is suitable because uh, we can also execute a native SQL queries as well as Hibernate provides HQL uh, features so we can use HQL. So there are uh, different, uh, you know, uh, query strategy Hibernate provides like name, named queries, criteria API. All right, so we can get the benefit of these, you know, these queries and we can also, you know, we can, we can just have, we can just utilize these Hibernate features. All right. So overall, Hibernate is a best choice in a current market for ORM tool. It it contains all the features that you will you will ever need in a ORM tool. All right. So these are the important benefits of Hibernate. Now, uh, now what are the advantages of Hibernate over GDBC? All right. So here are the, some of the important advantages of Hibernate over GDBC. So the first is Hibernate removes a lot of boilerplate code that comes with the GDBC API and the code looks cleaner and readable. All right. And Hibernate supports inheritance, association and collections. So these features are not present in a GDBC API. All right. So Hibernate implement, impl, impl, implicitly provides a transaction management. In fact, most of the queries can't be executed outside a transaction. So in, in case of GDBC API, we need to write a code for transaction management using commit and rollback APIs. All right, and JDBC API throws SQL exception that is a checked exception. So we need to write a lot of try try catch block code in order to you know handle the uh, you know exception in case of JDBC. All right, so most of the times it's a redundant 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 in every JDBC call and used by the transaction management. So Hibernate wraps GDBC exceptions and throws GDBC exception or a Hibernate exception. All right, so we don't need to write a code to handle it. So Hibernate built-in transaction management removes the usage of try try clutch blocks. All right. And one more thing is Hibernate query language is a most orient, you know, more object oriented and close to the Java programming language. So for GDBC, we need to write a native SQL queries. All right. And a Hibernate supports a caching that is better for the performance. So GDBC queries are not cached, hence performance is low. All right. And a Hibernate provides an option through which we can create a database tables too. For GDBC tables, must exist in the database. So in Hibernate provides, uh, you know, D, uh, DDL, DDL2, HBM2 DDL property through which we can create uh, tables automatically. But in case of JDBC, we need to manually create tables in a database. Uh, and the Hibernate configuration helps helps us in using JDBC like connection as well as GNDI data source for the connection full. So this is an important feature in enterprise application and completely missing in JDBC API. Right? And Hibernate supports the GP annotations. So the code is independent of implementation and is easily replaceable with other ORM tools. So JDBC code is very tightly coupled with the application. Right? So these are the benefits of Hibernate over GDBC.